Look, it's been quiet for them as well, but 2023 has not been a great year for Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. First came the alleged near catastrophic car crash in New York when they just went around in a taxi a lot. Uh, then a blow to their plans to become media moguls, not to mention being called grifters by a Spotify executive who had already given them a lot of money. It's tough. It is tough indeed, but according to sources, Megan has spent the past few months planning a phoenix-like rise from the ashes. David, for more on Megan 2.0, we are joined by PR expert in crisis communication, Molly McPherson. So great to have you on the show. Hey, look, this has been one bad PR decision after another for this couple. In your professional opinion, what on earth are they doing wrong? Well, from a publicity point of view, there have certainly been a number of PR missteps between the couple. From the New York incident, as you mentioned, and also the end of the Spotify deal, I think the problem with Harry and Meghan is that their inconsistency has led to some vulnerability. So they need to settle on a brand, and it looks like that may be happening soon for Meghan. So she signed with the number one agency in Hollywood. This is WME. This is and she's been looked after by the king of all agents, Ari Emanuel, like a real bulldog. So is yeah. this a good move for her? Well, this is a big move for Megan. I think she's recognized that perhaps that her talent does not lie in content creation or landing big uh, guests or being a change maker. She's shifting more to the world of influencing and Ari Emanuel, I believe would like to land her somewhere between a prolific producer like a Reese Witherspoon or a wellness guru like Gwyneth Paltrow. Hey Molly, this is an interesting one. You believe that she potentially parted ways with Spotify and not the other way around. I actually used to listen to Archetypes and I enjoyed it, but you reckon she was the one who pulled the pin? I mean, there was a lot of speculation out there about what happened. And with contract negotiation, one never knows what happened. But there were reports that she was struggling landing the big guests. And it's hard to continue a podcast if she doesn't have the guests. People would just have to rely on Megan. So this pivot towards the influencing world, I think, probably is a good one for her at this point. Do you feel like someone behind the scenes, because Harry has been in the spotlight with the conflict with his with his family, with the conflict after, uh, after you know, um, with the courts in England as well, that someone behind the scenes is saying to Meghan, you need to just let him, you know, wear all this and we're going to rebuild from here? Yeah, I think this is part of the WME move, that they right. may strategically try to split the two. You know, there are some reports now that Harry is going to be in peace talks with his father. And this is the chance for Meghan to be her own brand as she becomes more of that influencer and trying to move into more of the production role in Hollywood. Do you think it could be more than just a business split then? Well, certainly we are all being led to believe that. So whether or not that's real or just trying to drum up some publicity before there's a next Meghan Markle move, mm. that may we'll soon find out. You, you tell me, though, Molly. I, I follow you on TikTok. I think your takes are really, really strong on this sort of stuff. You tell us what you think Harry and Meghan need to do from today to sort of just course correct. Well, something that I always thought from the beginning is Megan needs to go back to where she was strong, and that was with the TIG. I mean, her role as an influencer was very strong before her and Harry got together. And I suspect that she thought or other people thought that that wasn't the right move for her. She's almost kicking and screaming. But I think now in 2023, I think she senses that's where her influence lies, but also that's where the money lies. But doesn't she sort of need to lay low for a bit longer? Like, can you really have a renaissance, a rebirth after a couple of months? Well, she's certainly going to change her brand, but all the signals right now in terms of the stories that we're seeing, the photos that we're seeing, Megan at farmer's markets, these are the types of little tells out there that are letting us all know something new is coming and it's around the corner. What about that Insta account? There's an Instagram account that many believe could be her. It's just called at Megan, which she's, I'm sure someone's had before and she's probably paid a pretty penny for this. Do you think that's her? Oh, absolutely. She can't be the only Megan in the world <laughs> that is on Instagram. So again, that sounds like another backroom move between WME and Meta, the owner of Instagram. Uh, like I said, and she also did have an interview with The Cut where she said, you know, do you want to know a secret? 
I'm coming back to Instagram. Mm -hmm. So now we may all know the reveal that that's where she is. Molly, I think you might be on it. All right, we'll, we'll come back to you soon and do some more deep dives into PR nightmares. I think you're really good at this, Molly. Great to speak to oh, you. Thank I, you so much. I feel like we all need to start buying up Megan domain names. And can you imagine? Damn yeah, Megan.com. I've got it on threads. I'm just going to get it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Make a fortune. Hey there, Today fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God. Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?